Again, thank you all for joining us. We may have a few more people joining after we get started, but don't want to leave you all waiting. Um, thank you once again for joining our call. What we're going to talk about today is factoring. And if you're on this call, it's likely because you have clients with a need for financing, a need that's not being filled through traditional sources. I can tell you when looking at the attendee list for this call, we have bankers, business brokers, CPAs, attorneys, business coaches, a wide variety of people on this call who want to learn more about factoring and want to find more ways to help their clients get the working capital they need. And what we're going to do today is not try to make everyone an expert on factoring, but to get you thinking about the types of clients that would benefit and how you can help them using our program, and just to, to know when somebody could be a fit for what we do. So let's get started. Simpl in the simplest terms, what is factoring? The term you've probably heard thrown around, but here's what it boils down to. Factoring is the sale of a company's accounts receivables in order to obtain working capital. And they're sold to a company that's called a factor, and that's what Versa Funding is. We are a factoring company. There are lots of types of factoring out there. What we offer is called non-recourse full notification factoring. What that means is when we buy a receivable from our client, we're taking on the credit risk. We can't give it back to our clients simply because their customer didn't pay us. When we buy a receivable, we take ownership, we handle collection, and it means that their customers will make payment to Versa. That's the notification aspect of the program. My feeling is if you're going to be out there talking to your clients about factoring, you want to make sure you understand and are using the proper terminology for factoring. My background is lending. I come from the loan world, and that's the terminology I know. So I'm going to compare the terminology of the lending world to that of the factoring world. So in the world of lending, you call the facility a loan. It's factoring world, factoring facility. We don't talk about loan amounts in the factoring universe because we're, just, we're not making loans. What we talk about is factoring volume. There's no lender. Since there's no loan, there's no lender. What we have is a factor or the purchaser of receivables. And in the scenario today, Versant is that factor. No borrower. We have a client or seller of receivables. There's not a note or loan agreement. Instead, there's a purchase and sale agreement. There's no interest rate. Uh, I know customers may often ask you about interest. What's the interest rate? There is none uh, because there's no loan. But there is a discount rate or a fee against the invoice. We'll talk more about that later. In lieu of a borrower or obligor, we have account debtors or our customers' clients. Let's talk a little bit about what would be a good candidate for factoring with the Versant. Our approach is we're looking for small to medium-sized businesses with anywhere from one to 50 million in annual revenue. Now we've had a few clients a little smaller than that. We've had a couple that are much, much larger than that, but that is our sweet spot. And what all of our, co our clients have in common is that they have a need for liquidity and they can't afford to wait the 30, 60, 90 days it's taking them to get paid. Now many of these customers would benefit readily from a bank line of credit, but they don't qualify for some reason. They can't get that, that cheap bank financing. Um, so maybe it's a business that's a startup, they're just getting underway and don't have a track record yet and can't attract a bank's interest for financing, or maybe they're growing more rapidly than a bank is comfortable with. I can tell you recently we've had a number of clients that are doing quite well, um, very successful, but they're able to get a small line of credit from the bank, but they need more. They need more cash on hand to really take advantage and grow their business. Sometimes our clients are seasonal, and uh, that can, that can uh, spook a bank when a client doesn't have nice, regular, steady stream of cash flow. Uh, then we've got a lot of clients that, that they've, they've encountered trouble. They've, they've had hard times. Um, they may be short-term issues, maybe one-time events that they're working through, but what it boils down to is if it's a prospective client for factoring with the person is because either they can't get any bank financing or they can't get enough bank financing to meet their working capital needs. Our clients' customers are usually large corporations, municipalities, or the government, and the reason that is it's for a reason I described at the, the outset of this call, is that we are a non-recourse factor. So I'm not concerned about the credit quality of your client. That allows me to work with businesses that are new or struggling or growing rapidly. But it does mean that I need some something involved in the deal that has strong credit strength. And for us, it's our client's customers. So 
I'm not saying our clients need to be selling to the, the AAA rated companies of the world that are the real top notch, but they need to be strong enough to support the amount of debt they have outstanding to our clients. Um, but that's where all of our analysis is. All of our analysis is around who are our clients selling to. And Versant serves most industries out there with just a couple of exceptions. The, the two industries we avoid are construction and medical. And uh, for anybody who's uh, been involved in the factoring business, you probably know that a lot of factoring companies have those exclusions. Um, but I do know some experts and some specialists in those industries, so if anybody on this call would benefit from that type of contact, please do let me know. And just reminding myself, something I neglected to say at the outset of this call is uh, I will be certainly leaving time at the end for questions. Uh, you can submit them to me during the course of the call if you think of something that you'd like to talk about. There's tools to submit questions through GoToWebinar, or you can shoot me an email with those questions, or you can just um, speak up at the end of the call. Okay, moving, moving on. How does Versant, or how can Versant help your clients? What we're, our, our primary goal and role is to provide cash to our clients quickly. And it is not uncommon for us to go from beginning to end in a matter of several days. Um, our traffic transactions can be quite large, but because all of our focus is on the receivables, if we're able to quickly verify the receivables that are being pledged, uh, we can move very quickly from point A to point B. Uh, and that uh, we often advertise three to five days. I've seen it happen time and time again. Among the reasons we can move quickly is unlike a traditional bank facility is we're not underwriting our clients. So we're not having to really dig in deep and understand the, the business they're in, the industry in they're in, the intricacies of their financial history. We don't need to do that. We just need to know who are they selling to, are the receivables valid, so we can move very quickly. With factoring, we're not putting any restrictions on how our clients use the funds we provide them. But what I've put together here is a list of just common reasons why uh, a business might factor. Uh, sometimes it's to finance a project that they, they'd like to accomplish. Um, sometimes it's growth or growing rapidly. Uh, we've had a number of clients that, uh, again, think they're, going, they're doing well. They've got a bank facility that meets all their needs, but they've got an opportunity to take on some more business, a new customer. But that customer is expecting to pay them kind of slowly, which would put a cash strain on the business. Factoring can be a great tool to alleviate that strain. On occasion, a business will use factoring to help them finance the acquisition of a business, uh, possibly a competitor or complement to their existing operation. Uh, it can be a bridge, a, sh a short-term bridge. Uh, many of our clients enter a facility expecting to, to exit it uh, in a short period of time, uh, and the hope is that we can help them graduate to cheaper bank financing. Uh, most commonly, it's just to meet the everyday working capital needs of their, of their operation. Uh, typically used the way a business would take advantage of a bank line of credit. The difference being instead of borrowing from us on occasion as they need or in greater increments as they need, they factor or sell more of the receivable to us as they have the need. For a seasonal business, you may see a, a client take advantage of factoring to help prepare for their, their high season. Or maybe they're going through some challenge and they need the cash to get us through that challenging crisis. And from time to time, we'll work with a business that's currently in bankruptcy uh, and we'll help provide them financing uh, as they are getter in possession. Next, I'm just trying to give you a feel for how the cash flows in a factoring transaction. And this is sort of the first step, where we purchase a receivable from our client. When we do, after verifying it, we would advance them 75% of, of the face value of that invoice. Then we collect from our client's customers. Our, custom our client will send a letter to their customers uh, that's comes from their letterhead that explains they've entered into a financing arrangement to help fund their growth and to send their payment to Versant Funding until further notice. And so when we receive that payment from our client's customer, now we have that remaining 25%, which we call the rebate. That's the 25% we didn't initially advance to the client, and we take out our fee. And the way our fee typically accrues is on average 2.5% per month, or more specifically, the fee is 2.5% of the invoice amount for the first 30 days an invoice is outstanding, and then it's broken, day into 10 day, broken down into 10-day increments thereafter. So after the first 30 days, each additional 10 days is an additional 0.84%. So just to break that down, on average, 
our clients are getting paid in about 40, 45 days. So their typical fee is about 4 to 5 percent of the invoice amount. So going back to this example, we advance 75 percent of the invoice amount up front, and then when we're paid, the client would get about 20 percent less our fee of about 4 to 5 percent. And there is an ongoing flow of cash in factoring. Uh, we have many clients where we're buying new invoices from them every day. So every day we're, we're sending cash into our client's account. And then every week we're gathering up all the rebates, all the invoices that we receive payment on over the course of the week, and we're wiring that. So it's an ongoing flow of cash. And not, that's not to say we don't have clients that use us less frequently. We have a client that bills once a month. So it's, uh, it's very simple, where we, they submit an invoice to us uh, at the beginning of each month, and we advance against them. And then we don't send them any more money until we're paid by their client. But we can accommodate either of those. And we actually have some other clients where their sales are more intermittent. So they make a big sale. We stack with an invoice. We can accommodate that as well. Um, but So there's a lot of flexibility in how a client can use us. But in many cases, there's an ongoing flow of cash. Um, so the client can also, when they have a greater need, use us to, to a greater extent and less when they have lesser need. Um, and that's one way we differ from a bank line of credit is we don't set a cap. We'll factor as much in receivables as a business can generate with good credit quality companies. I'd like to give you a little feel for the competitive landscape. You may have noticed, maybe you did a quick Google search before getting on this call, there are a lot of factoring companies out there. There are tons of factoring companies out there, but they tend to fall into a couple of main categories. The bulk of the factors that you'll see out there are pretty small. Uh, we'll call those category one. And those are companies that many of them are self-financed. They may have a small line of credit they receive from a bank um, that they're using to buy receivables. Many of them refactor or buy a receivable and then sell it to another factoring company. They usually have a lot of limitations on how much they can advance. Uh, strict limitations on customer concentration, uh, stricter limitation, limitations on industry. Um, so they can, they can meet the needs of a, a select group of businesses out there, but they're certainly not for, for everyone. Then there's another big group of lenders out there, sort of the big boys. Um, and these lenders tend to look at a higher quality transaction, uh, maybe a, a small step below what a bank would do, but still they tend to do a more robust underwriting of the client and not focus on just the customers the, the way that we do. And I can tell you at Versant, uh, factoring companies in both of these categories have been great referral sources for us in that we've been able to successfully fund a great number of businesses that these other factors were unable to do. Uh, we, and we complement each other. And I can also say that I have referred deals to these factors that were not a good fit for, for Versant. Um, but I think you'll get a good feel by the end of this call for the, the niche that we fill. We tend to, to look at some larger transactions, somewhat more complex transactions. Uh, we have a client right now where uh, we have over $10 million outstanding to a single account debtor, so a single concentration, which is very unusual in the factoring business. Uh, I mentioned earlier how quickly we can move. It, there's not many factors out there that can go from an introduction to a funding a week later, but we have done that time and time again. And we are a, a bit of a boutique shop. Uh, we are, we're a small company in that we are um, not, not a large number of employees, but we've got very deep pockets and very significant resources to do some very large transactions. But then we have a bit of a personal touch where each of our clients is assigned an account executive. They don't just get stuck with an 800 number and, and a customer service rep and, and hope for the best. Uh, they're going to have somebody who can work with them. And uh, we like to say that it's similar to the personal banker relationship of old where we have had many a situation where a client needs more, more cash than usual. Our standard 75% advance rate is it going to work right now, and we have advanced more than than uh, than usual to accomplish that, uh, or we have a, provide what we call an over advance to help them get over a hump, uh, and we also provide our clients access to real time data. And we find that one of the many reasons why our clients' receivables will perform better with us than they do with with them is that we provide data. Uh, data on when the customers have paid, uh, on what's outstanding, what type of discounts have, have been taken. And we police that and we help our clients improve the quality of, of their receivables performance. What I'd, like to, what I'd like to do now is anticipate some of your questions. 
Um, there are a number of things I expect you're thinking about and would like some clarification on. And I'm going to try to hit on those right now. But again, I'll leave some time at the end for any specific questions that, that you might have. In the simplest terms, again, what is factoring? Where it's a sale of a company's receivables in order to obtain working capital. Versant's brand or version of factoring is non-recourse full notification, meaning we're buying invoices and taking on the credit risks. What are Versant's basic requirements for factoring? Well, most importantly is that a client is selling something, whether it be goods or services, to good credit quality customers. That's what's important. And that we can verify that those receivables are true and accurate. Does Versant offer factoring in all U.S. states? The answer is yes. And we currently have clients all over. Uh, we're working to close a transaction right now in Southern California. We recently closed one in Ohio. We're based in New Jersey. We've got clients there. But we've got clients all over the country. Does Versant require certified financial statements in the application process? And the answer is no. Uh, we're not going to look for, ask for financial statements on our clients. We're going to want to get a good feel for the customers and their credit quality, but we're not going to audit or review financial information. Does the company have to be profitable to qualify for factoring? And no. Uh, we've had a number of clients that uh, either they haven't turned a profit yet because they're so new, or they've incurred a, a one-time issue that has led them to have, have losses for a period of time. And our hope is that we're going to help provide a bridge to them until such time as they're bankable again. But a client being unprofitable uh, is not uncommon for us. How long does the closing process take? Well, typically, we can get it done in about a week. I can tell you most commonly why a deal will not close as expected is if there's a surprise. And there's probably a lot of people on this call that can relate to that. But when we ask a client a question up front and the answer turns out to be different later, that can often cause a delay. And for us, the most common reason for a delay is a client telling us there's no, no lien on their receivables, and then it turns out that there is. Now, that's not a deal killer. Uh, if there's a lien on receivables, we can sometimes negotiate and collaborate with their current bank and carve out the receivables for us and get the client the working capital they need. But it's just those kind of surprises that will derail and delay closing. What industries will Versant purchase accounts receivable from? Well, just about anything is fair game. We exclude medical and construction. We leave that to the specialists. But as long as we have a client selling something to good quality customers, there's a great chance they're a fit for us. Is there a minimum volume of receivables that needs to be committed to, in order to qualify for factoring? Well, we like to start at 100000 per month. So a business that's going to have about a million dollars in factoring volume with us over the course of 12 months. Uh, I've seen us do less than that in, in cases where we expect a client will grow with us, but we don't like to do deals much smaller than that. Does Versant require personal guarantees? No. Uh, we are a non-recourse factor. Uh, we're not looking to off, offload any credit risk onto our, our clients or their their owners. But what we do ask for is a performance guarantee, uh, sometimes referred to as a validity guarantee. And we need our clients to stand behind their receivables. Because what risk we are taking is credit risk, but what we're not taking is risk of non-performance. So for example, uh, if a client sells a lot of product to, let's use Sears in this example, and Sears goes bankrupt and can't pay, that's our loss. If they ship a bunch of stuff to Sears, and Sears says, this is what we ordered, or these are defective, we're not paying, that's our client's risk. They're not offloading that on us. And that's what that performance guarantee speaks to. Who qualifies for factoring? A wide range of companies in many industries can qualify for factoring. It can include, can include businesses that have had a negative net worth, that are losing money, or even in bankruptcy. Um, so it's not uncommon for there to be some issue with the client's performance. Um, but even if they've got bank financing in place, we can potentially work with them, provided the bank can carve out receivables uh, and allow us to have a lien on them, first lien on them. Can a company with little or no credit history qualify for factoring? And the, again, the answer is yes. It's all about the customers. So a new business, an untested business, but who is able to, to convince some strong companies to buy their product or service, that's a prospect for us. Will the company seeking factoring be viewed negatively by its customers? I can tell you this is probably the most common objection I receive from prospective clients. And no, factoring is just not, doesn't have the negative connotations that it really once had. Particularly in a credit environment that is as tight as it is today, 
Uh, the fact that a business can't get what they need from a bank it does not make them uncommon. It does not mean that they're necessarily in distress. Uh, and so many large corporations are using this right now, and it's very common for a client to, to worry if they have really big customers. For example, a, a client that's selling to Walmart, like, well, what is Walmart going to think? What are they going to say? Walmart is paying thousands upon thousands of their suppliers through factors. There's, it's so routine for them and companies like them. They flip a switch in an accounts payable system and payments go to a new, a new place. So it's not at all uncommon and it's just not the, the red flag that many of our clients expect it to be. Do a company's customers always know when a company is seeking financing through factory? And the answer is yes. If they're using the type of uh, full notification facility that we have, uh, it is imperative that the client's customers are aware that this facility is in place. They're going to verify us for us, their, the validity of the receivables, and they're going to send payments directly to us. But again, it's just not the red flag that many of our clients expect it to be. What I'd like to go through right now is just a quick example. If any of you have ever talked to your clients about factoring, uh, a common objection they'll raise is, well, those are outrageous. it's so offensive. I don't want to pay that. That's, that's, that's outrageous. And if a client can get all the financing they need from a bank at prime plus a little bit, great, and they should do that. But if they can't get any or as much as they need from a bank and factoring will allow them to do more business than they do today, this example tries to illustrate why that makes sense. And in this example, we're assuming revenues can go from 100,000 before factoring up to 200 after factoring. And we're assuming the profit margins of the business are good. And that's typical of our clients is that they've got decent profit margins. So in this example, they're 35%. And variable costs at about 10, fixed costs about 20. Before factoring, they're able to bring a net profit of about $5,000, or 5% of, of, of gross revenue. But after factoring, they were able to do much more revenue, because they had more cash on hand to meet the demands of their clients. So as a result, more money goes to the bottom line. So bring the profits from $5,000 to $20,000. So again, the point of this illustration is if factoring can allow the business to increase revenues, and the profit margins of the business are strong, they will make more money by factoring than by not factoring. I think it's always helpful to cite some, some real life examples of clients that we've helped to help the people on this call think about your clients and those of which might be a fit. This first one is a consumer electronics manufacturer. And I can tell you right off the bat that consumer electronics uh, are not easy to finance through factoring or through banking. Uh, it's sort of an out of favor industry often the factor or lender will worry about, well, what if the product's defective? Um, what if there's issues with the deliveries? Uh, so that alone makes it, can make it a tough industry to finance. This particular business was well established, and they sell uh, tablets and e-readers and MP3 players and have some great customers. And this client actually had an issue with some high returns. And those returns caused a violation of a bank covenant and a default. So the bank has called a loan, and they're, they're pressuring the business to pay it off as soon as possible. And they have been paying it down, but now they're in a bit of a cash flow crunch. And they need some working capital in hand to meet their needs. Now, this business was just not bankable. And even most of the factors were balking at the size of the facility. Uh, we're stepping in, and we were introduced to them last week, and we're on track to fund them this week. So this is an example of a substantial transaction out of favor with most of the lenders that we're expecting to get to the closing table uh, in, in under two weeks. This next one is a, a business that's sort of an old line industry, commercial printer, uh, but still people, as much as they like to say we're going to a paperless society, so a lot of paper getting printed, and that's what these guys do. And th their issue was they recently acquired this business, um, but the business had some issues and they weren't able to get bank financing for the acquisition, so they had to sell it hold the note, which can be very easy at the time, or seem easy at the time, but can sometimes lead to some baggage. And the seller and the buyer didn't get along so great and there was a strained relationship. Seller trying to get involved in the operation of the business, uh, talking to suppliers, uh, talking to customers, and it wasn't working well. So our buyer, current owner, wanted to pay off that seller. They leveraged all their equipment, did a sale lease back to raise cash to pay off the bulk of the seller note, but it didn't leave any cash on hand to meet the working capital needs. We're now factoring the receivables, providing them the operating capital they need. Uh, the buyer believes they can really help improve the performance of the business, and pay us off uh, probably 18 months from now. The last example I'll cite is another sort of out-of-favor industry in the factoring business, and this was a security software provider. 
Uh, this particular client provided security uh, for devices to, uh, to help protect the data on those devices. And their issue was they had a merger they were working very hard to accomplish, a merger with a complementary form of technology. And a lot of effort, a lot of time from management went into making sure this merger happened. Well, um, then unfortunately it did not. Uh, the merger did not go through, but they had somewhat neglected their financial condition. They had really neglected some of their customers, so revenues were down, and they were unbankable. And other factors shied away from this deal because of the industry of software. So we're stepping in, providing liquidity to this business, uh, and again, this is another one. We're just providing a bridge, and we expect them to move on from us uh, in the near future. So as I said, uh, I'd really like to leave time to hear some of your questions. I've tried to anticipate some of them. Uh, but I expect there are there are others. I'm going to first just go through the list and see if anybody has submitted questions uh, using uh, through GoToWebinar. And it looks like we do have one here. Someone has asked, please elaborate on non-credit problems that would trigger payment under a performance guarantee. Sure. And I alluded to one such issue um, where the product were uh, defective. Another reason could be that the product delivered was not what the customer ordered. Um, but it, it's always about the product or service provided not being to the customer's specifications. It has nothing to do with the credit condition of the customer. So in the simplest terms, customer can't pay, that's our problem. Customer just won't pay, it's likely our, our client's problem. Um, but again, we could speak more. Uh, we could speak speak more specifically if uh, anyone has specific questions on that on that issue. Somebody has asked, why don't you factor healthcare receivables? Well, it's it's sort of a specialty. Uh, with healthcare uh, comes issues such as dealing with insurance companies, uh, dealing with Medicare, Medicaid. You have some very slow paying receivables, uh, and as I mentioned, there are some experts who offer that type of, of factoring. Uh, and if, if someone has a specific need, I'd be happy to connect you with somebody who does that. Um, but it's just we leave that to the specialists. Well, those were the only other questions that were submitted so far. Does uh, uh, anyone else have a question they would like to submit? Or I believe I can fall off mute. If anybody has a question, they can just speak up. Well, if there's no other questions, you all have my email address, my phone number, and you can reach me after this call. Uh, with any questions you may think of, I expect to make this uh, the both the audio uh, as well as the presentation available uh, online, so that anybody wants to hear more about it, want to share it with somebody that think would find it interesting, uh, be, be feel free to do that. I'm so I'm sorry, we have had one other question, which I'll I will answer. The question is: Do you factor long-term receivables uh, over three years? Uh, I'd need to know more about the specifics, but. Uh, if a receivable isn't due for three years, I, I'm not even sure I would call that a receivable. Um, we, we're typically looking for receivables that we expect to pay within the next um, 30, 60, 90 days. Uh, and a receivable that's not due for three years, uh, it's just a lot of things can happen between now and collection of that receivable. Um, so if, if the individual asked that question would like to talk more about it, I'd be happy to do that, but in all likelihood, no. Oh, I'm sorry, I think we have had a few other questions. Uh, minimum loan size. We typically start at $100,000 per month in factoring volume, but I've seen us do deals that are, are somewhat smaller than that, uh, but not usually. Uh, we'll do smaller if we expect there to be an opportunity for a transaction to, to grow, but we're not in the market to do much smaller deals. And again, if somebody on this call has a need for a smaller deal like that, I'd be happy to uh, connect you with somebody who I think can help. Someone also asked, sorry, did I, miss, I missed what percentage of the receivables person takes. 
uh, if I think I understand that correctly, we advance 75% of the invoice amount up front. And then when we collect the receivable, we advance the balance minus our fee. In terms of we can potentially factor 100% of a business's total receivable, uh, depending on who they're selling to. But I should also mention we don't require that a client factor 100% of the receivables with us. We've had situations where a business will just take a subset of their customers. Um, some have chosen those that they expect to pay the fastest, others those they expect to pay the slowest, or somewhere in between. Or some have selected just a couple of, of customers they want enough to factor. Um, but we can potentially factor all of the clients' receivables. So I hope I answered that question. Someone has asked, how do you review the client's customers? Well, most of the time, all the information we need on a client's customers is available publicly. Uh, a lot of our client's customers are public companies, so that's easy enough. Also, being in the factoring business and being in the business of understanding credit, we have a lot of access to information, information to uh, access to information on the performance of a number of, of companies and how they pay their bills. So usually, we can get all we need that way. In some cases, we can't, and what we'll ask our client to do is get a credit application from the customers, getting some financial data to help us make that decision. I can tell you that in rare cases does it come to that. And I can also tell you if we can't get the information we need from public information and have to ask for an application, it usually means that client's customer is small and probably not a great fit for factoring. But not always. So that's sort of the last resort. We don't need to do that in many cases. Another question, how does one differentiate amongst the smaller Category 1 factors? Like you said, there are so many. Also, many offer 80% advance rates. Uh, sure. No, there's a, there's a, a large number of, of small customers, of small factoring companies. Some of them offer higher advance rates. Uh, I, I don't know all of them very well. Uh, I can tell you sometimes a quick Google search can go a long way to learning about a, one of the smaller guys' reputation in the factoring business. Uh, 80% advance rates are sometimes available. Our view is the advance rate shouldn't be that important to a business if they've got regular sales, because as we talked about, uh, we're not keeping the balance. We don't keep that 25%. We just we just pay it later when we receive payment. So uh, in a deal with an 80% advance rate, they're getting 80% up front and then uh, maybe 15% later. With us, they're getting 25% up front, or 75% up front, and 20% later. So if the business is making sales regularly, it doesn't make a big difference in their cash flow. Uh, somebody asked, what industries do you prefer to factor? We've got a lot of manufacturers, distributors, wholesalers, staffing companies, consultants. We're, we're not, you know, we're, we're sort of agnostic about the industry. As long as they've got good quality customers, chances are we're interested. But some of the industries I mentioned are, are common. What items are typically needed to preview a deal other than an aging before customer list? Well, uh, you've captured most of it right there. Uh, we, can, uh, we can learn most of what we need to, to know about a business just by those two documents. We'll ask a couple of other questions as well. For example, uh, we'll want to know the margins of the business. Like I referred to earlier, if the margins are good, there's a better chance uh, the, the client can, can work with factoring. And we're going to ask about any liens on the receivables. Uh, because, as I also mentioned earlier, that can be the, the most common hurdle to getting to funding is there being a, a lien on the receivables. But with as little as that, we can very quickly tell you. And, and our usual process is send me an aging and customer list, and chances are within 24 hours I'm going to tell you whether or not we're interested. I'll ask you to arrange a conference call. Where then we'll, within an hour or two of completing that call, you'll have a written proposal to present to your client. I think we may have a couple more questions. Uh, I'm sorry, just bear with me one more. OK. Somebody asked, can you factor a subscription-based revenue model? For example, a company that charges a monthly subscription over one or two-year contract period. And I tend to answer that is, is sometimes. Uh, we don't want to factor an invoice associated with pre-billing. So billing up front before work is performed is not something we would do. Um, but if they're billing monthly for services provided the previous month, that may be something we can work with. So I'd love to learn more about uh, that deal if there's, there are specifics. Somebody has asked, um, what does a person do to verify the creditworthiness of their customers? And I think I've described that. We're going to research 
publicly available information for the most part and see what we can learn about a client's customers. And if we can't get enough publicly, then we'll ask our clients to, to dig up a credit application for us. Okay, well, I think I've answered all questions now. Uh, again, I'll restate. You've got my contact information there on your screen. Uh, feel free to reach out. Uh, and then please, when you receive a copy of this presentation, share it with anyone you think would have an interest. And uh, I look forward to working with you all soon. Thanks so much.